The ability to store your wealth in your head until we get to a world where we have, uh, what's that movie, Inception, Inception yeah. where someone can go <laughs> into your head and steal your private key. Bitcoin has just become the most valuable asset the world has ever seen. When you look at Swissborg, 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 Swissborg is sorti ce matin. They have an app where you can buy crypto. They connect to Binance, HitBTC, LMAX, and Kraken and find the best rates in the markets. What I like about Swissborg is that they have an amazing app that can directly buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and also cash out as well. Through Swissborg, all assets will have a fiat gateway. And here is the thing. Premium features gives you zero fee trading. That is zero fee. If you want to buy Bitcoin with fiat, I suggest you buy through Swissborg rather than Coinbase. And if you're interested in trading the likes of Ethereum or Bitcoin, use Swissborg's application. In a fast-moving and confusing crypto asset market, get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto asset and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member. Helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments, all of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the CryptoSlate community. Subscribe now at CryptoSlate.com forward slash edge. Your gold, since the age of metal detectors, can be confiscated. How do you transfer your gold across the world? You can. Metal detectors will find it. Gold is also not really censorship resistant because unless you're paying someone in person, but we have an interconnected world, we have the internet. So gold can't transfer like that over, you can't decompose it into its elements, into its atoms to send it to someone. And uh, while gold is finite, just like Bitcoin, Bitcoin is more finite. Bitcoin is more scarce. Bitcoin is harder does require more work to achieve, not yet, but very soon, it takes more work to get to, to create new Bitcoin than it does gold. So uh, it's stock to flow is better for Bitcoin. Wealth is about how you could create a digital financial ID, like a risk profile, build a portfolio that matches your convictions of how to how much risk you want to take, how much profit you want to make, how much products you want to use as well, what is the purpose of your, your philosophy of investments. And I think so this is exactly what, you know, we, we everyone wants is at the end is, is to create wealth. And, and it's not only monetary gain, it's really building something that's right for you. And everyone should always really think about first, what is your risk profile? Is it conservative, is balanced, is growth, is it high growth? And based on that, you could know like how much are you able to take in the bad times, not in the good times, because everyone's gonna say, I wanna make 500% per day, right? It's just, but are you able to lose 85% or 15%? And that's the first thing that everyone should start, you know, re you know realizing. And then it's, uh, it's more about diversifying your portfolio and trying to add different investment assets that could manage to get to that. And as well, what's your purpose investment, I always say, right? If you want to go into DeFi because DeFi is a great way to decentralize finance, or if you want to go into Bitcoin because you really believe that Bitcoin is one of the saver that helped decentralization. If you want to go into Ether because it's the first one that brought in smart contracts, if you want to go into Swissboard Token, this is the first one doing crypto wealth management. For me, it was, Ty Lopez, actually, he kind of set it off for me. Um, he's very smart. He showed you the reward. Here's my Lamborghini. Here are the books. I should do that now, actually. <laughs> and, um, and, and, you know, he, he started off with that, which immediately is different to school because school is all about here's your punishment. 
get the grades. And, and so it was that contrast. I really wanted to, 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 you know, hit it big when I was younger. And seeing people like Ty Lopez, seeing other people who, you know, like seeing even movies like Wolf of Wall Street, right? Uh, just seeing very wildly successful people, I started to think what, like, started to wonder what's possible. And, and then for me, it was, it was reading books. That's what allowed me to build the mindset. Um, I, I had the loser, classic loser mindset, you know, before everything is everyone else's fault, nothing is my yeah. fault, I hate my life, all this bullshit. Uh, and, and then, yeah, you know, like I started reading these books at 14. It was a very young age. I got very lucky to start reading those uh, self-development books because it, uh, like, that is the perfect age to, to learn it's things perfect. like... perfect. Your mind yeah. is developing so much, yeah, right? Yeah, especially when that reward is in front of you because now you're receptive yeah. too. So that's how I started out. It was the whole mindset thing. Uh, that led to habits, a really, really strong desire of wanting this life. Um, that was a big part of it. You know, like if you don't really work to it, it's probably just because you don't want it that bad. You want to say you want it, but you don't actually want it. So in terms of Bitcoin itself in this space, is it Bitcoin that you're the most interested at the moment? Is it uh, specific projects? Is it an asset class, sub asset class exchanges, decentralized exchanges, yield farming? I mean, there's so much in the news. Like, what are some of those specific parts that you really feel like, oh, that's something that I really like to hear more about or learn more about? It's a very good question because I think that, well, especially when we work in, it, in journalism, uh, of course, Bitcoin is the thing that everybody uh, is searching for. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's very important for the media to create not only clickbait articles. And uh, in my opinion, what is the most interesting is the application of the blockchain technology. Uh, could it be in the healthcare industry, in uh, I don't know, you know, wine, in the art business, in uh, uh, providing access to the unbanked? But that's the thing. I mean, I think Bitcoin is just like a, a name that became um, so popular all around the world. I remember Davos at the World Economic Forum yeah. three years ago. It was uh, January 2018, so just after the, the boom of the price. Yeah. And uh, everybody was talking about blockchain, but they decided that the, the community of the World Economic Forum preferred not to combine this two, um, this two concepts, phenomena. Blockchain is not Bitcoin and Bitcoin is not blockchain. It's not true, actually. Uh, but so for me, Bitcoin is an opportunity to talk about blockchain in mm -hmm. general, because Bitcoin is the most famous use case of, uh, of a blockchain network. And it's uh, simpler maybe to explain, but there is so much behind. Yeah, you mentioned, well, exchanges, it's, it's in the financial industry, but uh, blockchain actually can be applied with whichever data we want. And that is very important. What are some of your favorite projects or favorite asset classes or, or specific protocols? What excites you the most about DeFi? Uh, so generally, DeFi was always there, just uh, there was not that not much hype around <laughs> it. So like yeah. everybody knew that generally blockchain is DeFi because it uh, removes intermediaries, it uh, like gives uh, access to uh, finances and etc. And so, like there are a lot of uh, use cases, such as we see decentralized exchanges, insurance, and the biggest one is uh, lending and borrowing. And uh, this year, with Compound, it became super big. Everybody started uh, searching for these governance uh, tokens, providing liquidity to a lot of uh projects to a lot of protocols but uh, you should be as well careful with that <laughs> especially if uh, like uh, a lot of these uh, completely new projects are unaudited so uh, there are uh, there are some risks associated with that uh, but um, generally in some way it seems uh, like the times of icos when everybody launched uh, the new projects just without uh, this idea and without anything else because of the hype, like free money on the market. Uh, this, the same we can see now with uh, DeFi, <laughs> like new free money on the market. You just stake, you uh, get uh, enormous gains <laughs> and etc. But so of course, uh, there are some uh, legit projects, uh, trustworthy. And um, as for my personal investments, I prefer not uh, like, of course, it's, sometimes it's better to enter the, uh, some projects very early so you can uh, get um, the biggest returns. My approach for the DeFi um, bubble, the upcoming DeFi bubble is I want to hold not the small DeFi projects, which I invested in a few, right? And they did well. But uh, in the end of the day, I think it's the best to invest into these Krakens like um, Uniswap. 
Polkadot, where th where they are actually governing, like they are in the DeFi space and they are like, Ethereum was profiting from the ICO hype, Polkadot will be profiting from the DeFi hype, also Ethereum or Uniswap. So I wanna buy these things with lower risk and still an insane upside because many of these IEOs, ICOs, you are going to have opportunities investing in. Well, if 95% of them are failing and you are doing 20 investments and you are a little bit unfortunate, you're not getting this one, you lose it all, right? We know that altcoins tend to go up a lot. Um, and I only care about um, altcoins going up against Bitcoin. I don't care about it going up against the US dollar stuff. Yeah. So I want to end up with more Bitcoin in the end. And um, I have had a few good altcoins that did well. And uh, I'm going to be honest, I, I didn't do any um, extensive research on the altcoins because it seems like it doesn't really matter in the altcoins. You don't really need to know what you're buying. However, I would suggest doing some basic research, of course, not just going and buying randomly on core market cap. Um, but, uh, and also you don't want to buy scams, right? And there are a lot of bad projects out there. Uh, what I basically try to do is I rely on information from people that I trust and I know that they did a lot of research and, um, and I take a look at it, of course, and then I buy, but, um, but I try to stay to what I understand, and that is Bitcoin mainly, and also Ethereum. I, I really enjoy uh, my exposure to Ethereum, which is like 10% or something of my portfolio, um, approximately. Um, and I think that, yeah, so if I were to tell anyone to go into Bitcoin or go into crypto today with, let's say, $10,000, I would still uh, say 80% exposure to Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I would say 10% Ethereum, and then you can take 10% um, into random altcoins that, that you find interesting. DeFi is a big thing that people are talking about. DeFi seems to be growing. DeFi could be something that I think people should um, have some exposure to. I do have exposure to DeFi. Um, actually, by holding Ethereum, you already have an exposure yeah, to DeFi. Yeah, it's infrastructure yeah. for all the DeFi projects. Right? Even holding Bitcoin is exposure to DeFi because Bitcoin is the biggest DeFi project. Yeah, yeah it is. And it's the most successful uh, long-lasting DeFi projects in this space. And um, I think that, yeah, people tend to forget that, but decentralized finance, that is what Bitcoin is, right? So um, um, I think that, yeah, Bitcoin is what matters absolutely most. You can read books, but sometimes you can't compress the scale of time. So what you will learn by observing market for a year, right? Even if it's five minutes every day for a year, what you will learn during this time will not be the equivalent if you compress the same time in one week or two weeks. Like if you constantly look at the market for every day for two weeks, which is maybe equivalent to the, to the same amount of time of looking at the market 10 minutes every day, you will not learn the same thing. Mm. So you can't compress scale of time. You need to accept that you need some experience. And that's why sometimes having a mentor that can show you the path, you know, accelerate your learnings is something extremely good. Mm.